same church as usual Can't you tell by the music, bro? Can't you tell by the love you felt? Before you took one step through the door And that next level teaching God is reaching higher every week Frequent flyers speaking life despite deceased and vibra Mints we in cause he's inside It's not a private party, you're invited Come in tired, believe inspired All generations, even cyber Find us on the web like these some spiders uh, let's slow it down so you understand how it's going down Up in here, there's one rule Gotta love everybody that comes through Them doors, in short Grace is what we endorse Faith is what we help grow so welcome to the fam center, you know Well, peace, 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 I come in peace Peace and greetings, Faith the Live Ministries And all of our online guests Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to a special presentation for Faith Alive Ministries. I was blessed to teach a series entitled Love the Right Way. It was an uncut midweek gathering. And of course, there have been those of you that knew about it and you've been asking about it. Well, here it goes. We're about to air it for you. It has been edited because there were some things that were said in-house that we decided we probably shouldn't put online. It was all edifying. Nothing was vulgar. Or necessarily inappropriate but it was definitely adult content and so we edited some of it which is another reason why some of you have now an incentive to make sure that you're in the house for the next gathering but this is going to bless you immensely it's a four-part series so we're going to air part one on today before we get into it invite your family your friends your followers even your foes into the fellowship to hear the message of faith concerning love and then I need you guys to tell us your name where you're from we want to know who's in the house Lastly, stay involved in the chat the entire duration of the teaching, the broadcast, in the cyber sanctuary. It'll be a blessing. No dissertations, no solicitations, no debates. Keep that stuff out of the chat. But everything else is welcome. Praise, emojis, celebrations, hearts, likes, all of the things that keep it healthy. All right. Our virtual ambassadors are here to serve. And I'm excited about this lesson. So watch this quick video. Let's get into it. And I'll be back in a moment. Happy Tuesday, everybody. <laughs> When it comes to life, in order for you to be the best of who God called you to be, you must be humble enough to admit you don't know everything, no matter how old you are. You ready for this? Married couples, you can still learn about marriage even if you've been married over 50 years. There's, it got quiet in this church. There's always something you can learn. Tell your neighbor, everybody can learn. Everybody can learn. Everybody can learn. And so if we have this mindset of, well, I've already got it worked out. True, I get it, you're having a successful time. I'm proud of you and I think that's wonderful. But it is important to know that if it's good, it can still be better. And if it's great, it can still be better. So there's always something you can utilize for your benefit. Now, my last order of business before we go any further with this actual conversation is, some of you would ask the question, YPJ, why are we having a conversation amongst married couples, singles, and divorcees. Shouldn't we, because Bishop back in the day, we separated everybody. Married couples would have their meeting, singles would have their meeting, and then you would have a meeting for divorcees because it is sometimes a very different conversation. Being single and being divorced can be very different. And so they would separate them. The problem with that is in this day and age, the married people sleeping with the single people. The single people don't understand how divorce works. The married people think they want to get divorced. The divorcees want to be remarried or they want to stay single. In other words, everything is mixed up. And because everything is so mixed up, we need to have a conversation to decipher what is what, who is who, and how do we do this? Amen. So I am not interested in having married couple sessions right now. I'm not interested in having single sessions because most of the time when you have a single session, who are the only people that show up? Women. <laughs> the brothers, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want nobody convicting me into commitment. I don't. <laughs> and then a conversation for divorcees can be traumatic and terrifying. So this is why we're approaching it this way. 
Now, we're going to talk honest tonight. We're going to talk clear tonight, but we are going to be responsible, okay? And then our responsibility, we're looking for some result. So let me start this off. I have a question for the women. And I would like for you to honestly answer me, ladies. What is more important to you? Now, I'm going to ask. Don't answer yet, and I'll show you how you're going to answer. What is more important to you, ladies? Appreciation. Don't answer yet. Appreciation or stability? Listen to what I'm saying. Appreciation or stability. If appreciation in any relationship is more important to you than stability, put your hand up for me. You prefer appreciation, one, over stability. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many of you prefer stability over appreciation? Okay. So, statistically proving the point of what I have researched, Pastor Kara, most women care more about stability than appreciation. But on the flip side, more men care about appreciation than stability. And the reason is men biblically are supposed to be responsible for what? Stability. All right. So because of that, if a man has been given the responsibility of ensuring that a household is stable, his reward is what? appreciation but a woman who has stability set in her soul can be appreciative which means that her response to the stability that you give her will allow her to maximize the totality of who she is I know that sounded deep but it's not listen very carefully men want to be appreciated but how dare you expect appreciation when you've done nothing worthy of appreciation <laughs> right 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 and women want stability but how dare you desire stability if you're creating chaos that doesn't allow stability to manifest so the question then is that if men are responsible for stability what does that represent in a household now just think about it for a minute everybody's different but can we talk about basics Basic requirements of stability are you need somewhere to what? Live. You need somewhere to live. When you don't have somewhere to live, that's not a stable environment. Now, it doesn't have to be a, a, a mansion. It don't have to be somewhere out in Granger. But it needs to be a stable environment. Wait for this. In order for the place you live to be stable, talk back to me, you have to pay what? Bills, all right? Somebody else, prostitutes, no bills. <laughs> what? <laughs> bills. You got to pay bills, right? If the bills are paid on time, the home structure is stable. If the house structure, watch this, is safe, is stable. So stability also speaks to safety, right? Because if I feel unsafe, I'm emotionally unstable. So in the Bible, the scripture says that men were responsible for the stability of the household. How so? They were the protectors of the household. I saw a video the other day where a man was walking down the street with his girl and they put a prank out on them. And this dude jumped from behind a garbage can in a clown suit and he jumped behind his girlfriend. And I was like, I know they broke up after this video was over. They had to. But biblically, when the, when the war would take place where the enemies would come against the people of God, the women and children did not go to war. Now, here's the problem. We live in a Western cultural society that says men and women are equal, and they are not. There is no equality amongst us in the sense of our makeup, and neither one of us is better than the other. We are different than one another. We have different functions, and that's good. But the reason why they didn't let the women go to war and the reason why they didn't let the children go to war is because without the woman's womb, there is no production of life. So they kept the women at home, not because they were lesser vessels, they were more valuable. I just said something right there. The men were so concerned about the bloodline being extended, they wouldn't dare put something of such value in harm's way. So they would always say, keep the women and the children at home. How many of you have heard the story of Joshua and the Battle of Jericho? where he marched around the walls. There were no women present because women didn't go to war. 
You've heard the story about Jehoshaphat and how they were to go to war and all they had to do was praise the Lord and they would get the victory. There were no women present because men knew that their responsibility was to ensure that the household was protected. This is not just physical warfare. This means a man protects his household from pedophiles. In our church, we deal with a lot of people who deal with issues and struggles. And if you go back into their past, many of them, unfortunately, were made subject to someone that did something to them highly inappropriate that caused great chaos in their lives. See, I told y'all this is going to be a real conversation because we have too many men that are becoming so feminine and soft that we're asking women to carry the burden on their shoulders that men's shoulders were designed to carry. Right? So now men feel like, I don't need to pay all the bills. She make more money than me. Just because she makes more money than you doesn't lessen your responsibility. Y'all ready to fight? <laughs> doesn't lessen your responsibility. Um, there was an individual said to me the other day, he said, what would you do if you, you had a wife who made more money than you? I would shout. I said, because I'm still going to pay all the bills, but we got nothing but pure profit coming in from her job. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't, you know, I think a lot of times that speaks to insecurity in a lot of guys. My wife make more money than y'all. You guys are one. You can build generational wealth that way. So men were always responsible for the protection of the home. They were responsible for prayer. They were responsible to be the priest over the home. Their, their job was to be a representation of God. So stability became that. But what we do is we adapt Western cultural society practices. And so we say, well, in America, this is what they do. Well, that's dangerous for you to base what we do off of American culture alone because America was built on the back of murder, slavery, and family separation, especially in the urban community. Because in slave times, who did they take away from the family? The father. Which is why during welfare, when it started to emerge, how can a woman get more money if who is out of the home? The man. <laughs> when they took the man out of the home, they said, am I lying? Am I lying? Am I lying? You get more food stamps, no man. That was an intentional act because the absence of men has created a vulnerable environment. Most of the women that are running around saying they don't need a man is because they had to deal with trauma that was associated with the absence of a man or someone who did not know how to be a man and demonstrated abusive behaviors and things of that magnitude. But God is calling us to use his word to bring men back to their place where they can stabilize home environments. So I always get tickled by men who say my wife doesn't appreciate me and I ask them immediately, how do you do with the finances of the home? I do pretty good. I know immediately why she don't appreciate you. <laughs> because if you think it's cool to be financially illiterate in a time where information is available, then that is confusing. Man, she don't never give me none. Okay, so why isn't she giving you none? I don't know, man. Well, I'm looking at you now and I see oil under your nails. And I can smell you from here. Y'all quiet. They come in my office. I'm like, so you walk in the house with dirty fingernails. You walk in the house, you ain't took no shower. Everything on you is sticky. The moment you pull something down, it's all sticky. <laughs> and you just want her to jump all over you. Here's the problem with that. Men are seed bearers, so they're always ready to have sex. Women are not like that. They have to be prepared for the moment. And they're not prepared when you must eat. Come here, church. They're not prepared, married men, when you have said nothing to her all day. I'm talking real good in here. You ain't sent no text message. I don't, I'm not like that. Well, if you want something, you better get like that. Hey, my queen, I just want you to know I was thinking about you. <laughs> no, that don't mean nothing to you. Anybody ever heard of an artist by the name of Anderson Pack? Anderson Pack's a dope artist. He's a really great singer, great writer. He has a song where he has a line. This line is powerful. He says, how could one thing mean so much to you, but so little to me? And in his mind, he's trying to comprehend, why do you want to kiss me all the time? Ugh. Why does that matter to you? Because we're not all wired the same. 
And if you want reciprocity, then you must be willing to distribute what the other person desires. So with men, a lot of times, we don't understand that stabilizing an environment and catering to the makeup of your wife is going to get a different response if she is a woman of maturity. Now, if you have a stable environment, the bills is paid, the house is stable, everybody's safe, you're responsible, and then her behavior is still opposite. Now you're dealing with a dysfunction on her end which goes to how dare you take stability for granted? Because there are many women that wish they had somebody to stabilize their environment because they gotta do everything. I don't, I don't think it's a badge of honor that a mother has to be a father and a mother. I think that's a lot of pressure for a woman. Y'all can be quiet if you want to, but I think that's a lot of pressure for a woman to have to be mom and dad. You know why? Because she can't be dad. No matter how hard she tries, she cannot be dead. I know y'all don't like it because they told y'all stuff on these movies, but it is not true. A woman cannot teach a boy how to be a man. She can teach him to be courteous. She can teach him to be responsible. She can teach him to be chivalrous. She can teach him to honor, but she can't teach him manhood because she's never experienced it. She can tell him about men. I wish I had somebody in here. No different than a man can't teach his daughter how to be a woman. He can teach her to be a woman of class to the degree that she learns how to walk and talk, but he can't tell her what a real woman's makeup is. When she has her first cycle, he don't know what to do with that. Daddy, I'm on my cycle. Well, uh, you know, uh, let's pray. What? I remember when I was married, the first time I had to go to the store, I had two, I have two beautiful stepdaughters. I had to go to the store when Bryce first came on her cycle. And my ex-wife called me. She was like, hey, you need to go to the store and get her some pads. And I was like, what? <laughs> now, this is true. And I, some of y'all never experienced this, but men, some of you have. So I'm like, well, I got to go get them. So I went to the store. And she said, they right there in this section. All you got to do is find this kind with this on it. She's like, and, 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 and get the wings. <laughs> so, so, so listen, I'm thinking she's talking about chicken. <laughs> so you want pads and chicken? This is a true story. Men, don't it seem like no matter what, when you trying to find something, you don't want nobody to know you're looking for it. You can't find it. And you'll stand there for an hour before you ask for help. You're just like, ah. Because <laughs> I'm a man. I don't know about that. And when you preach these kinds of things, immediately it causes tension because society is trying to make us believe there's no gender. Every man in here that's running around talking about ain't no gender, I want you to get a period one time. I want you to have a baby. Y'all ain't saying nothing. With what you got. It'd be on that table talking about, I am a man, Damon. I repent. There is a level of respect and adoration we should have for different roles and responsibility. But oftentimes we don't realize how we hinder each other for not doing the basic and the simple things. Anderson Pack said, I don't understand why this is such a big deal to you. Just because it's not a big deal to you doesn't mean it's not a big deal to somebody else. All right, so Sunday we had a great conversation. How many of y'all enjoyed Sunday service? I really had a good time. You ready? All the married couples in the building, stand to your feet. If you marry, whether your spouse is here or not, just stand to your feet real quick. And if you're single, don't feel bad because I'm going to pick on you in a minute. All right. Married couples, I asked y'all a question on Sunday. I said, do you know your spouse's love interpretation, love language, how they are wired? And I immediately went to some of y'all after church, and I said, hey, uh, what's your spouse's love language? And they said, man, hers is gifts. She said, no, it's not. <laughs> what's your husband's love language? Oh, it's quality time. No, it ain't. It's physical touch. I just be spending time so you'll touch me. <laughs> All right, real quick, married couples, how many of you are familiar with your spouse's love languages? Primary, secondary, put your hand up. Ooh, them hands got up. All right, you can be seated. So real quick recap, because we about to jump from married to single. I got something for the singles tonight that's insane. So don't get nervous, get excited. <laughs> so we talked about the five love languages, the five love interpretations. Physical touch is not just sex. Physical touch literally means that I enjoy for someone to embrace me, hold my hand, rub my back, rub my head, dig in my ear, whatever the case. You enjoy someone being near you. 
There are those of you that when you're in church, I can tell one of the spouses really enjoys physical touch because they lean into their spouse or they want to be next to them. The problem is a lot of people don't necessarily like that. And there's various reasons. Some people don't like physical touch because something happened to them. So they're traumatized. But that's that person's love language. So we talk about physical touch. We mean that you enjoy the embrace or the physical connectivity of a person that you love. Gifts just means you enjoy thoughtful things presented to you that show that the person was thinking about you. So it's not necessarily gold digging where if you don't buy me this, I don't believe you love me. But it is someone giving you something that makes you feel good about yourself. Acts of service means this person makes my life easier. When your car is on E, they'll go fill it up for you. Um, when you come home, the house is completely clean and ready to go. This person will go to the store for you at 3 o'clock in the morning to get you ice cream. And some of y'all be doing that stuff. And you got a good person that will do it for you. So acts of service could be they make sure that every need that you have that's overwhelming you, they say, how can I help and what can I do to assist you? So that's acts of service. Quality time is not quantity. It doesn't mean we spend all day together. It means we spend intentional time together that is specifically focused on the development of our relationship. That doesn't even necessarily require communication. It could just be, babe, sit here and watch this movie with me. It could be, hey, would you go to the game with me, babe? And you don't even like basketball, but you go with them, don't know what's going on. Just go get you something from the concession stand and eat till the game is over, <laughs> right? But they want you to be attentive to them in certain cases if they do want to go to dinner and have a conversation. My nephew Derek is going to have a problem when he gets married because Derek likes watching games on his phone while he's at dinner. And I tell him, you got to stop doing that, nephew, because at some point she's going to be like, I don't care about the score. If you want to score, put that down. <laughs> so it's undivided attention. It's a part of, it's a part of, 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 of understanding the necessity of giving someone the, the attention they need, right? Then the last one is words of affirmation. That means you're a person that you enjoy being built up by words. Appreciation means a lot to you. If you put on a dress, you want to hear your husband tell you how pretty you are, your boyfriend, whoever. You put yourself together, you want your wife to tell you. This is important. Words of affirmation is a very interesting thing because watch this. Everybody can tell you that you look good, but if the person that you love doesn't tell you, that has an impact on you. Amen? Apostle Ivy Hillier told me something the other day. He says, you know, when I get done preaching, I don't care if nobody in the audience thinks I preach good. I need to hear my wife tell me I did good. And I said, that's really powerful. So affirmation means a lot to him. So those are the five interpretations. Now, I want you all for the next 15 seconds to consider what is your primary and what is your secondary. My primary is the one that's the most important to me. The secondary is the one that in second order is important to me. Now, if you say, I need all five, you selfish, and we gotta work on your personality. <laughs> you can want all five, but they have to go in an order. So, you got physical, t Nate, do you have that graphic still? Could you throw that up real quick? Because I wanna make sure they got it. And then, <laughs> and then it's gonna get fun, because this next one for the singles is wild. So, we wanna make sure that we put it up. So, you have words of affirmation, quality time, Gift giving, physical touch, acts of service. You got 15 seconds. Really think about it. What's the most important one to you in this season? Because they change. What's most important to you? Do you care most about which one of those five? And those are the definitions over there. All right. Now, after you've come into agreement with yourself about what's primary, which one would be the second most important to you? Second most important to you. In this season, because they change. And some of you are like, man, I don't really know, because a couple of them are kind of even. But just pick one. Pick which ones would be first, which one would be second. That if you are going to maximize who you are, that would be important to you. All right? Okay, now you can put the other graphic back up. Here's why I want you to think about this. If you claim that physical touch is your primary, and you're not receiving that form of love, I can guarantee you your life is, is on half right now. Your tank is on half right now, and it may be less than that. Because when you find out how you're wired, that part of you needs to be attended to so that you can operate in functionality. And there's nothing wrong with it because you're designed different ways. So if you are a quality time person, and there is no one spending quality time with you. And the first thing church people want to tell you to do is what? Pray and spend time with God. Well, God told Adam it is not good for man to be alone, which means you can have God and still be alone. 
As long as I got King Jesus, that is not Bible. I don't need nobody. Yes, you do. The Bible says where two or three are gathered. He loves union. He loves connectivity. So if you're not receiving those things, you ready for this? It's going to affect how you function. Here's what I've discovered, Pastor Sandy, and this isn't always the case, but 99% of the time. Most married couples do not express to one another what they require. They expect the person to know without conversation. They have unrealistic expectations because they have unspoken expectations. He should know that I wanted gifts for my birthday. He doesn't know because men are not that smart. No, I'm joking. We all right. But, you know, in all sincerity, we, we legitimately, watch this, it's not that we're trying to disregard what you want. A lot of times men's mind is somewhere else. We do good with instructions, not assumptions. The fella should have said something right there. We do good with instructions. Babe, I just want you to be creative. The problem with it, everybody ain't romantic. So you left it up to him to figure out what romance is. He didn't got some Kool-Aid some ramen noodles and put it on a plate with a candle from Bath and Body Works. Like, What's up, baby? Let's get it. Got Jodeci in the background on a Bluetooth speaker and that was his idea of romance. And now you're disappointed. Because if you do not, listen to me, you cannot hold someone accountable to fulfill an expectation you have not spoken. I know y'all don't like that. It's not romantic if he doesn't just figure it out on his own. This is not a detective movie. If you want results, communicate. Right? So many people don't know love interpretation because we have it voiced it. And watch this, you have to respect the fact that what they care about may not matter to you. So you do it for them, not you. God said something to me uh, this morning, I was praying about this whole setting. And the Lord says some people won't adjust the way they distribute love because they make not only receiving love about them, they make giving love about them. Watch this. Your husband says, baby, I'm finna buy you a, a, a Versace, you know, purse. And you're like, babe, I don't want no Versace purse. No, I'm getting you one. The reason he wants to do it is so he can post online that he bought it for you. It's not about you. Y'all not saying nothing to me in this church. It's about somebody celebrating what he did for you. And that's not love. That's selfishness, ladies and gentlemen. Fill that up there for me, Nate, 1 Corinthians in the Amplified Version of the Bible. And while we have to have a different mindset in the approach, the Bible says it is not, love is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love is, and this is God's love we're talking about in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. It's not going, it's got to be my way or no way. For it is not what? Self-seeking. So when we talk about loving one another, we're supposed to be figuring out how do I fuel you? And if I properly fuel you, you should be asking in reciprocity of maturity, how do you fuel me? Which means what Jesus said about marriage is law. Jesus said marriage is for the mature. That's what Jesus, he didn't say it was for the horny. He said it is for the mature. He didn't say it is for the lonely. He said it is for the mature. He didn't say it was for the financially struggling. He said it is for the mature. And he did not mention your biological clock. He said marriage. What does maturity represent? Maturity represents wisdom. Maturity represents restraint. Maturity represents I do what I have to do even when I don't want to do it. And many people will say, well, you don't know how she treat me. I don't know how she treats you, but I do know what you're responsible for. Your end of the deal. Because when you were standing up here with Bishop, and you was looking in her eyes and looking at her thighs, and he said, for better, for worse, better, for worse. But all you was thinking about was better. For richer, for poor, for richer, for poor. All you was thinking about was richer. Till death do us part. You weren't thinking about death. Well, you were thinking about killing it, but you weren't thinking about death. So then when life happens for real, talk church, and you have to actually demonstrate maturity, now we're at a crossroad where you say, I just can't handle this no more. What did you sign up for? I had somebody tell me one day, I just thought marriage was going to be fun. 
Now, I'm not saying marriage can't be fun, but if that's the reason you got married, that's hilarious. This is a covenant agreement. Somebody says something, you don't get married to be happy, you get married to be holy. I totally disagree. I believe you can be very happy in your marriage. But it requires you to be mature. Look at your neighbor and say, maturity is a necessity. Maturity is a necessity. It is. Mature, all right? So <laughs> when we talk about marriage, the big word we got to use now is maturity. And ask myself, babe, what do you want? Baby, I want quality time. If you're an antsy person who don't like to sit still, that's hard. Oh, we got to go somewhere. <laughs> yes. So you got to carve that out in your brain. All right. On Tuesday, I'm going to take her to her favorite restaurant, Golden Corral. <laughs> Baby, go down that line and <laughs> get everything you want. Country fried steak and jello. And for two hours, I got to be mature enough to not look at my cell phone. Not scroll social media. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I got to be mature enough to create a conversation that actually helps us to get to know each other better. Do you know that sometimes you should ask your spouse questions you've already asked them years ago? Because sometimes the answer changes. So I already, I already know her favorite color. What if that's not her favorite color anymore? Or her favorite food is this. What if she can't even eat that no more? She got gout. <laughs> I'm serious. You, you really can't ask people about... Okay, let, let me say it this way. How many of you will acknowledge that you have changed a whole lot in five years, just in a five-year span? So if all these hands are up, you mean to tell me that we can't have conversations to see where we are currently in our status and relationship, right? Sometimes you should reminisce in your conversations on the good things, not what she did three years ago. I still ain't forgotten how you burnt that turkey on Thanksgiving. None of that. Maybe, listen to this, y'all. Maybe you should dream together. Baby, where do you want to go on vacation? Oh, I've always wanted to go to Dubai. I was looking at it online. Now, you know you don't have the money now. But what's wrong with you starting to research now? Man, I'm going to get this girl to Dubai. I'm going to figure out a way to get her to Dubai. And then sometimes, watch this. Why don't you download a photo of a building in Dubai and text it to her and say, baby, keep dreaming. We going. That'd get her excited because it shows you were paying attention. Let me tell y'all, ladies, let me help y'all with this. I'm giving y'all some game. Men don't like women that don't pay attention when they talk. They don't. If a man is, because men can shut down on you and never open back up. Women will blow up on you, cuss you out. Men will shut down and you think everything is fine and he will suppress everything and say nothing else to you because if he ever feels like you're not listening to him when he's talking, he won't talk to you anymore. But he's going to talk to somebody. I love the Lord. He's going to talk. Now watch this. This is my last point for the married couples for a minute. We'll swing back around because I got to say something to the singles. One of the biggest mistakes that married couples make to prove that they are not mature is conversational dominance. That means you talk too much. You talk too much. You never shut up. Huh? You talk about, y'all don't know that's old. That's in the 80s, y'all. <laughs> you talk too much. Isn't it proven scientifically that we can only retain so much information? I remember you told me something years ago. You said, son, you can't preach too long because they ain't really going to retain too much of what they And if I recall, you said something like after the first um, three minutes, they can decide if they're going to listen to you. And after about 18 minutes, their, their brains are warped. So, so some of you asked the question, Pastor Wabi, you always telling jokes, you tell stories, you did it, because I got to keep giving y'all three different sermons in one to catch your attention again. Because people tune out. It's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you tune out at the place that ministered to you. You're like, man, he's right. I got I to gotta do better. And then you don't hear nothing else I say. Right? But conversational dominance means, okay, we sitting across. Deacon McCool, Sister McCool having a conversation. Deacon McCool wants to express that, you know, he wasn't happy about something. She wants to express she wasn't happy about something. The courtesy is, all right, baby, you tell me first what I did. And I am going to listen to understand, not to respond. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to, as a pastor, I've had to learn to listen to understand. But some of y'all can't, you ain't hearing nothing because you can't wait. To, I got to, yeah, but I got something for you. Oh, wait till I come back at you with this one. 
and you got the socks in your hand. He left these on the floor when he left the house. I can't wait. What about these, you know? <laughs> I got text messages I can't wait to bring up. So he says, okay, you go first, sweetheart. You tell me how you feel. He's listening to understand. Now, the courtesy is get to the point. Don't add extra information that throws him off the point because he will miss the point with the extra information. So, okay, um, <laughs> I'm a firm believer that it is wrong to hold a person hostage concerning offense for 24 hours. Your husband did something you don't like, and he says, babe, what did I do? I don't want to talk about it right now. Okay, I'm going to let you cool off. You come back a day later, babe, what did I do? I don't want to talk about it. So then the man says, all right, forget it, and he lets it go. You just don't care about anything, do you? What that's called is manipulation. The Bible says, let not the sun go down on your wrath, which means you're supposed to let that stuff go. It is not mature to hold somebody hostage for an offense. You're supposed to bring it to them. Now, conversational dominance is where most married couples struggle because they don't listen to each other. They try to out-talk each other. But it requires a mature group. One, one time, I remember a guy asked me, he said, man, a lot of times, pastor, she'll say things and I want to remember it, but I can't. I said, then why don't you write it down? He was like, what? I said, bro, get your phone out and say, babe, I'm not texting. I'm taking notes. Now, if you're offended by that, then you don't want resolve. Because what he's saying is, I can't retain all of this. So you say, you know, I just don't like the way that you leave your shoes at the door. Leave my shoes at the door. I'm going to come back to that. Okay, what else? Well, I just, you know, you played a video game too long. I played a video game too long. All right, what else, babe? I mean, pretty much that's it. Okay, now, it's my turn. Now, you, lady, pull out your phone, and you know you petty, so you mm, got mine. <laughs> so, he expresses what he doesn't like, right? Okay, maturity is we can address these things now because we've conversed about it. Babe, I like playing a video game. It just helps me relax, take some stress off my shoulders, but you're right. I play too long. I'm going to pull off of that, but just, I'm going to do it here and there. Shoes, I'm not used to that. When I was single, I just put my shoes by the door. Give me some grace. I'm going to work on that, all right? So if every once in a while I forget, it's just a habit I got to break. And then he's like, okay, well, babe, I understand that, you know, you don't like it when I take my wig off before we make love. And I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to help the married men in here. <sighs> you ready? Oh, my God. I <laughs> no, I'm not ready, Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> So it takes, it takes that, all right? It takes, it takes that level of communication. Hopefully you all enjoy part one of our Love the Right Way series. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section right now. Hands up, fire emoji, something to celebrate the moment. And I pray you'll tune in next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for part two. We've got three more parts. Part two is next week. Now, if you've been blessed, let's sow into the ministry today with our $15 fuel seed that we sow every Tuesday to enhance and to boost the economy of the ministry. And I know God is going to bless you immensely for continuing to sow into good ground. The principle is very simple. When you sow a seed into good ground, you reap a harvest. It's an agricultural rule that God created in the garden. So sow that $15 seed this evening to help us continue doing the work of the Lord. So many great things on the horizon for Faith Alive Ministries, and we want you to participate. You have your options on the screen. You can give by utilizing the Givelify application. Look up Faith Apostolic in the city of South Bend, Indiana. That's the incorporation name. Look for the Faith Alive emblem. You can give by going to our website, faithalivenow.com. Scroll down, click the Donate button. You can give via PayPal, credit card, or debit card. You can give by utilizing the Cash App. It's dollar sign F-A-M center dollar sign fam center or you can mail your 15 dollars seat in to 935 north bendix drive in the city of south bend indiana 46628 make all checks payable to fam or faith alive so appreciative of you all i pray you were blessed can't wait for you to enjoy next week make sure you tell somebody and share this broadcast let them come back and watch it in archive footage say it with me everybody one two three every debt is canceled every bill is paid my body is healed my mind is regulated my family is restored the devil is defeated in jesus name and we are above only god bless you guys and we'll see you on sunday giving at faith alive is very easy you can give by using the givelify app just look up Faith Apostolic Ministries in South Bend, Indiana, or scan the QR code on the screen.
You can give with the Cash App. Send your gift to dollar sign FAM Center. You can also give by going to our website, faithalivenow.com. Scroll down and click on the donate button, and you will be able to use PayPal, a debit card, or a credit card to give your financial gift. Lastly, if you prefer, you can mail your gift to Faith Alive Ministries, 935 North Bendix Drive, South Bend, Indiana, 46628. We appreciate all of you who give to this ministry. We pray God's blessings upon you and your household. This ain't church as usual. Can't you tell by the music, bro? Can't you tell by the love you felt? Before you took one step through the door. And that next level teaching, God is reaching higher every week. Frequent flyer, speaking life despite deceased and vibra. Meant to be in, cause he's inside. It's not a private party, you're invited. Come in tired, believe inspired. All generations, even cyber. Find us on the web like we some spiders. Uh, let's slow it down so you understand how it's going down. Up in here, there's one brew. Gotta love everybody that comes through. Then doors, in short. Grace is what we endorse. Faith is what we help grow. Welcome to the fam, sis.